Plenty of material once again to discuss uh, at the Super Bowl this year, both on-field stuff and off-field stuff. Jan Crawford is in Glendale, Arizona. A rainy Glendale, Jan, huh? Yeah, you know, and it's supposed to rain tomorrow and on Saturday, which is going to be disappointing for, you know, all the thousands of people who are here to go to all those parties and hang out around the stadium. But the good news is Sunday is supposed to be beautiful. So for the main event, we're going to have some of that Phoenix sunshine, uh, certainly by kickoff, or at least as far as the weather forecasters are saying, we know they don't always get it right. Um, so, Jim, was there any more talk about the, the potential Sherman, Sherman baby arrival today? Well, you know, that's kind of the crazy thing, right? I mean, he's like the best defensive player in the league. I mean, the Seahawks, he's a pivotal player on their team. And so now it's coming out that, wait a minute, uh, you know, he's having, expecting the birth of his first child, and he's not ruling it out uh, that he would miss the Super Bowl. But his quarterback, Russell Wilson, certainly is suggesting that Sherman's going to be there no matter what. He said earlier today uh, that he is thinking that if that son is born on Sunday, imagine how great of a game Richard Sherman is going to have, knowing his son uh, was born on Super Bowl. Sunday. Um, on the subject of the game, Jan, uh, so many off the field distractions between uh, baby talk, deflate gate, whatever else. Do, do you get the sense that now, three days out here, the, the focus is sort of starting to move to the game itself? Oh, absolutely. And I think that started on Tuesday, right after the absurdity uh, kind of freak show that was media day, you know, when thousands of people and, and not all reporters descended uh, in this stadium with players and asked them all kind of insane questions. And the players, by and large, uh, played along with that, except for Marshawn Lynch, of course. Uh, but right after that, and then what we saw yesterday and then today, their focus is on the game. And in fact, I talked to a lot of the players during that media day. I was asking them about deflate gate and some of those off field distractions and even in media day which has that free willing atmosphere even then their 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 attitude was like listen uh, you know I don't really care uh, it's dumb I mean the Seahawks players were saying this is dumb I don't want to talk about it let's talk about football this is it I mean this isn't for many of them the moment that will define their careers what they've dreamed about since they were little boys playing in the Super Bowl they really are trying to block out all that excess stuff because what happens on Sunday on that field could be, for some of these players, the greatest moment of their lives, of course, except if their son is born on Sunday, in Richard Sherman's case. <laughs> yes. And Jan, of course, always, I mean, it, this is the Super Bowl, so security concerns both on and off the field. I know you've done some, some reporting on this. Can you give us some sense of, of what uh, security is like there? We know, Jeff, it's always a concern for the Super Bowl, and what we're seeing this year is extraordinary, the measures they put into place, just as it was last year when the game was in New York City. I, a few minutes ago, we saw helicopters uh, circling above the stadium, as they will do uh, between now and Sunday, and then through the game, enforcing a no-fly zone, keeping an eye on what's happening on the ground, sending real-time videos to a command center where all kind of law enforcement agencies will be monitoring video feeds from all over this region. Uh, and then there will be all kind of things that we don't see every truck, every vehicle that has been entering the stadium between now and very, very early Sunday morning is being screened by massive x-ray machines to make sure they don't have explosives or any other dangerous material. The Secretary of Homeland Security, Jay Johnson, was here yesterday giving a, getting a tour and getting a briefing, and he is sure, assuring everyone that he believes this Super Bowl is going to be safe. But one thing, Jeff, that I love, and you know, you just don't think about these things, one of the great advantages of having a Super Bowl in a warm weather climate like Phoenix is that people are not going to be wearing those big, bulky, puffy coats like they had to wear last year in New York. That's one less thing security has to worry about. You know, tens of thousands of people all bundled up. It's kind of hard, you know, you could hide something in those coats. So that'll be a little easier on Sunday. Jan, we're dealing with blizzard watches here. I don't want to hear anything about warm weather. Um for, for oh, yeah, a little sorry, while at least. Um, but let me <laughs> ask you, cool let me let me ask you, Jan. So neither of these teams is going to get a chance to draft um, your Amari Cooper uh, from the Crimson Tide. I mean, he's going to be going on the top. <laughs> he, he's going to be going on the top five. He, he's a special talent. Yes, he will. Are you? Um, yes, although we're sad to see him leave Alabama, Jeff. We're very sad to see him go. I know you but are. But Nick will have other people in the. Yeah. But Lane Kiffin. <laughs> but Lane Kiffin is sticking around. Are you happy about that? Uh, you know, I, I've not gotten on the lane train just yet, and, and I was not crazy about the play calling and the, the really disappointing loss to Ohio State. So uh, I have very mixed feelings about Kiffin coming back, but my faith is in Saban. So I'm sure he knows what he's doing. I think, I think he does. Jan Crawford, thank you very much. Talk to you soon, Jan. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. Okay.